What is going on guys, Steve Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you how to do some simple grass. And I say simple because all it's using is planes and then some material settings to make it look a bit better than it is. Um, and I think it turned out quite, I think it turned out good enough that I'll make a tutorial on it. So uh, first I'd like to do a quick shout out to my Patreon supporter, Neil. Thank you very much for supporting the channel, I would not be able to do this without that tiny bit of support. So first I'm going to show you guys the actual material itself. So if I bring the material here, this is all it takes to make the material. So all that says is me changing the color a little bit uh, to make it sort of suit my needs a bit more. Then you've got your opacity and wall position offset. And what this basically controls is um, if I put the light behind this, you can see the light kind of shines through. And when it's in front, it obviously, light, obviously lights it up. So yeah, when it's behind it, the light will shine through. That's our sub um, subsurface scattering, our opacity. Then you've got your position offset, which is what makes it wobble. So it makes it look like the wind sort of affecting it. Then you've got your normals, and then we've got our uh, speculum roughness. So I won't be doing the normals today, because that's very just simply put the texture I'm going to use in Crazy Bump or Quicksaw, make the textures, make the normal map just from that. So first we need to do is we need to make some planes for this. So my model itself is just, I think, four planes. So if we keep grid on and just go like this. Rotate that up, move that up, duplicate it, rotate it, and go like that. So yeah, that's one, two, what? One, two, three, four planes. That's all you need for this. I did subdivide mine, so if I push three, modify, convert, and convert it, we can subdivide it. And the reason I did that is because when it's um, sort of being deformed by the wind, if you don't have it sort of subdivided, it won't move it around more vertices, so it won't look as realistic. However, this does get quite demanding, so depending on what you want to use it for, so if it's like a mobile game and stuff like that, you're obviously not going to want to do this because it's going to be a bit demanding. But for now, for what I'm showing you guys, it should be fine. So now you need the material, or the texture, shall I say. So, let's go on Google, type in graph alpha texture, or you can make these yourself, it doesn't matter. You can use any of these, all of these should work fine, the ones I can see here. Stuff like that shouldn't, because you obviously want it to cut off at the sides like this one. Um, you don't really want to go for something like this, because it gets too short at the sides. And the problem with that is when you start placing it everywhere, it you can sort of see the separate meshes, because they're a bit more divided out because it changes in height. Um, something like that should work fine. So you just pick one you guys want, and it should all work fine. Or most of them anyway. The one I picked was this one. So just put that, save that to your desktop, whatever you want to do with it. Come in back into Maya. Actually, you don't need to put it into Maya. If we um, just export this out, and I believe we already have one, yeah, grass test. We export that out. And then we just we move that aside and we just drag that into our engine. So, grass test. Throw that in. Import. There we go. And let's go to an open piece of land. And we're just going to throw this in as is. So, it's a bit big. We can change that later. So, first thing we know is you can't see through it. And we'll change that in our materials in a minute. So, get your grass that you just saved online and drag it in. So, I already have it here. Create material. Jump into your material. And now you're going to want to start fiddling with it. So, I'll have this over for reference just in case. So, first thing you're going to do is set that. Get the alpha channel. So, make sure it's a PNG. If it's not a PNG, go into like Photoshop, cut it out in an alpha map for um, a target and you can use that instead. So yeah, if it, if it already is a PNG, you should be able to just drag that into there, click on this, and change that to uh, masks. And that should automatically cut out for you. There we go. So two small things I'm gonna change, I'm just gonna change the speculum roughness. So we don't want it to be very damp grass, we want it to be quite dry, so we'll just set these values to these. So 0.2 for specular, 0.8 for roughness. And that should make it a little bit less um, sort of shiny like it was. So if we come back to my original material, I have a lot of things here. You don't need all of these things. Whoops. This is just because I wanted to change the color a little bit. Because if we come into like the original, it looks like that. Then if we come into the end result here, it looks like that. And that's just because it matched the environment a bit better. So if you do have more of a vivid environment, you might not even want to change it. But if you do want to change it like I have, you could just set up a um, multiply here. And I'll just do a more simple one. Make it a little bit less complex. Sample multiply. Just putting your value. 
you create that and turn that into a parameter because that will allow you to change it later and we could just call that color and if I jump into here I can save the value art that I'm using there you go just go there so I'm just using that color and then what you want to do is you want to connect that to your base color and not only do you want to connect it to your base color I mean I do have a desat as well so you can set that up if you want saturation and you can set that up to maybe about Depending on your environment, like I said, your, your environments might be a bit more vivid in color. So you might not even want to desaturate it. But for mine, I wanted to, so I'm just going to put that into there. Now, all you got to do is, I believe, connect this into our subsurface color. So if we come back into our material, we want to tick two-sided. So I'll quickly remember that now. Now, in shading model, instead of default lit, we don't want it to be default lit. We want it to be subsurface. Because what this allows us to do, so because I've already connected that up to our subsurface down here, if I pull the light behind our actual object, you can see the light's like shining through it. And that just gives us sort of a bit more of an actual grass effect. Because if you actually get grass and there's light hitting it, the light does go through it a little bit. It's quite, it's quite a thin sort of um, texture. So. That should be fine. So we can move this up, press C, and let's change that to our color. Ooh. Next thing I'm going to show you to do is our opacity and our well position offset. So because we've got set to um, for, oh, one left click, because we've got set to subsurface, we'll get an opacity appear now. What this will allow us to do is how much will the light be able to shine through it. So if we look here, that light is shining through it loads. So you can change that value up. So the higher it goes, the less it's going to shine through. Now, the bottom of the grass is usually thicker because it's all the roots. So I created a, um, I used a linear gradient for this. I'm going to show you how to do that. So if we just pull this out. And um, actually, I don't really even need that, I don't think. What we need is we need a linear gradient. Linear gradient, which is that one. And if we just preview that. You'll see that's gradient from left to right. So you just go grab your V. And if we just make a multiply so I can show you. You'll see that does that way. So we don't want it to be top to bottom anyway. We want to invert that. So if we um, just push O and left click. You'll get your um, 1 minus node. And this will basically just swap it over. Oh, wrong one. There you go. This will just swap it over so it's bottom to top now. And um, we want to get a multiply. And this multiply is going to be used for our actual um, world position offset. Because all we need for our opacity is we just need the V gradient, I believe. And we could just put that into our opacity. Now we're going to set up our world position offset. And what this does is just the what makes it wave. So it actually looks like wind is affecting it. So I'm just going to use a simple one. All right, and simple grass wind. Now we just need four values for this, so we can just set it up. Boom, 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 boom. Connect it to multiply. And what I'm doing here, so I'll explain that in a minute. So basically, um, let's get these values first. So I didn't use to do this, and if you don't do this, if I actually just connect this up and show you guys, and we stop previewing that, the whole mesh will sort of start doing the wind effect. At least it should, unless I haven't set it to real time. Oh, they're all set to zero, of course, yeah. So it's not going to do anything yet. Point two. And you don't need to do these values. These are just sort of my uh, personal preference for uh, making grass wind. You can change them as much as you want. You can make the intensity higher and stuff. So yeah, if we look, the whole thing starts getting deformed. And you can't usually see the bottom of grass, so sometimes you can get away with this because there's so much grass around. But when you do get to the edge of it, it's very noticeable, and it can sometimes throw off the illusion of it being grass. So that's why we get the gradient in, because we want it to only affect the tips and not the bottom. And that's what the gradient does. So if we look at this, you can see it makes the um, bottom darker, so it won't affect the roots. But if you look at the original, it's sort of all of it. So just throw that into your world position offset. Stop previewing. And your bottom should now not be affected. There you go. It's very stationary and the top moves. And you could go about adding values to this or subtracting values to make it so it doesn't affect it even more. But I'm just going to leave it at that for now. And you can 
um, highlight that, push C, and call that whatever you want. So, oh, we pass and world position offset PO. There you go. All right, and that's our those two set up, and then you got your normals, which I'm not going to sort of show you to do today because that just takes you throwing it into Quixel, making a quick normal map for it. So if we click apply, that should be pretty much nearly done. Um, I'm not sure if the material's on there yet. No, it's not. So we just run it into there. There we go. So we got our actual grass. So create a material instance for that. And then throw that on. And that will allow you to just change the color on the fly. So if you didn't like the color it was, you can make it darker. You can make it lighter. Or you can completely change the color. Um, so basically what I try to do is I try to make it match the floor a little bit better. Because... It sort of makes it blend a bit nicer. So that's obviously too big anyway. So what we're going to do is we need to set this up in our actual foliage. So I've already got that on there. And if I um, come into that, I can show you guys that I can paint my previous grass on. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. It's a bit laggy because I'm sort of recording the screen at the same time. So um, we don't need that now. We can just throw that in to our foliage. Just so select your foliage tab. Grab the one we just made, which was grass what is it was a grass plane oh grass test there you go Throw it in now come into the actual grass test itself and just drag your material you've made into there so it's that one there we go close that now it should be there this will now be still too big so if i click it you can see oh wait make sure you have any other foliage like actually des deselected or unselected um, make sure that one's only ticked yeah that's good so if I paint that, it's obviously going to be way too big at the moment. But looking good, but still way too big. So to fix that, you can either go into the material, uh, the object itself, you can export it smaller, or you can just come down here, change that to like 0.2, change that to 0.25, that would the height will actually vary, and then we can start painting that on. So um, they are too far apart at the moment. So now you can just come into here and turn up density. So you, you can go overkill if you really want, and that will make it like that. And that will start getting very demanding for your computer. But if we do look at it, it will start actually looking really nice. So like I said, you can actually set up normals um, and it will look, turn out a little bit better. But that's pretty much how I went about setting up some basic grass. Thank you much for watching. I hope this um, helped anyone who was sort of struggling with something like this because I wasn't used to doing this before sort of the other day. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you do want to support the channel, I have a Patreon account. So if you just look in the description, um, that'll be a link there. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed. And bye-bye.